Hello all, this is Craig Carter here from Interplay Learning and today we're going to discuss some easy integration ideas for the HVAC product into your curriculum. You yourself might just be learning about the simulations, planning on using them for the first time in this upcoming term, or you actually just want to further advance your current use of the simulations. I'm going to break down the learning into a few different groups. One is ideas on how to integrate it into your classroom setting. Another is actually assign, ha, assigning these for homework, including discussion of our badges and our earnings programs that we have in the, in the product. As well, and this is everyone's favorite part, we're going to discuss a little bit about the grading and assessing the students' work. I know I'm actually going to start with a quick description of the initial goals of these simulations, which is to help the students master the troubleshooting process. We believe that these simulations allow students to extend their lab time and practice and learn from their mistakes over and over and over again to master these six different troubleshooting guides that I'm showing here. Trust me, you're not supposed to be able to read every word, but it really begins to show the depth and the complexity of, of having to master these six different troubleshooting guides for these pieces of equipment. We believe that by knowing these backwards and forwards, the students are given a leg up when entering the field. We also, though, believe that these simulations provide your classroom access to six highly functional, interactive, engaging, and visible pieces of equipment that you can use every day to discuss different concepts, even outside of troubleshooting. So I'm now going to dig into a few of the different ways that we feel you can use these simulations in your classroom. As we know, classroom engagement is always one of it one of instructors things that they're worrying about and it's always on their mind and simulations offer a great attention grabber as well uh, for the students for example you could call a student up to the front of the class to go over parts of the equipment or to answer a question using this the simulation in a very engaging way this also always helps to keep the students to pay attention because they never know when they're going to be called up to use the simulation we also believe that they act as a great pre-lab prep to show students what to expect while in lab. Or if the students all have computer access or you have a bring your own device policy, you could actually hold an interactive lab where students practice a concept using the simulations, allowing you to walk around and check out different students. This actually is beneficial because now each student working on their own simulator uh, gives less of a chance for students to possibly hide amongst the group, which might happen in, in kind of a group lab setting. Now we will focus on a few of the features of the simulation that make it a great homework tool. First, it is very easy to assign a group of faults for the students to practice. This is certainly one of the easiest ways to use the simulation for training homework and to extend lab time. By going to the instructor section of the page, you can assign specific faults for each assignment. I always suggest even adding a pass fault in with current activities of the week in order to keep the students on their toes and retaining past information. As you will see here, when students log in themselves, they actually do not see the fault names that you have chosen for the assignment. Instead, they must complete the given faults with no names and then they receive an average grade over all the faults assigned. Other than the assignments, we have two ways to motivate the students using our challenge mode. The challenge mode is our game-like mode where you arrive at a house knowing only that the piece of equipment does not work and it must be fixed. Included with this challenge mode are motivating badges and earning games to engage the students. The badge awards the student for achieving different levels in the challenge mode. For example, to get level four, you have to complete two challenge scenarios on the intermediate level with five stars to unlock this achievement. When students engage in the challenge mode and receive five stars, they not only get credit in the badge mode, but they also get $100 of earnings. Unfortunately, this is not real money. Uh, as shown here, by opting into the national leaderboard, students can compete on a national stage. To dig in further, Chris has earned over 531 perfect scenarios to get to this earnings number. Estimating it took him about 700 tries at five minutes a try, this is almost 60 hours of simulation training. I personally believe that this is a great example of additional training to be used in a job interview, saying that you've done over 60 hours of troubleshooting simulation. An easy way to use 
these in your curriculum is to assign this that the students need to be on BADS level five by the end of March 5th or the students need to have $10,000 in earnings to get a B on the portion of their grade or $15,000 of earnings to get an A and if they go over and above and they get $20,000 of earnings you'll give them one point added to their final class grade. Lastly we'll go over everyone's favorite part grading. We want to make the simulations an integral part of your curriculum and we know making grading easier always helps this process. We just discussed ways to use it for the homework. Now we'll always look at ways we can transport the grades into your book. Now in the HVAC product, when you give assignments for homework, you are able to go in and see the feedback reports. You can actually make your own grading seal or you can use ours that is driven from the number of stars. Once the students complete all the tasks, you can actually download it via Excel. You can have each number of stars for each student by fault. You can then easily add this to your grading system. When it comes to the badges and the earnings, these actually do not integrate into the grading system, but that you should that should not affect you from assigning students to hit a certain level by a certain date. When it comes time for students uh, to show you what badge level they are on, they can actually just print it out or you can just view their screen yourself. This will give you a quick snapshot of what level they have achieved. For the earning system, we always like the idea of having a little fun competition in the class and having all students report their earnings every week on a board in the classroom. This way, hopefully, students get motivated to do more and more challenges. Also, you'll easily be able to keep track of where students are. There's no hard and fast rule as to how you have to use the grades in your curriculum. As you get more used to using the simulations after a term or two, you'll know exactly how these fit into your curriculum and best ways to grade them. I hope you were able to take away something new today for your class. And I always want you to feel like you can reach out to us here at Interplay. Please email me at ccarter at interplaylearning.com with any questions. We also have a link to some great teacher resources, including correlation guides, with the text, a best practice guide, and some onboarding materials. Thank you all so much for attending, and have a great day. Bye-bye.